live from ECU. This is Pirate Nation Gives Live. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Pirate Nation Gives Live. Today at ECU, we are celebrating Pirate Nation Gives, which is ECU's eighth annual day of giving. Um, I'm joined here by Carly and her uh, mom, Julie. Uh, so thankful they could join us today. Carly, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself first. Yeah. Hi, I'm Carly. I graduated from ECU in May, and I'm now living in Wilmington, going to UNCW to receive my master's degree. And I'm Thank Julie you. Russo, uh, Carly's mom. Super proud to be here today and super uh, happy to be talking with you, Sam. Awesome. Well, thank you both for, for joining us. And before we get started, since today is Pirate Nation Gives, um, I do want to remind you that you can donate to the STEP program until 11.59 p.m. tonight. Um, you can scan that QR card up there, or you can go to give.ecu.edu backslash PNG. Again, give.ecu.edu backslash PNG. Um, Let's go ahead and, um, oh, I'm sorry, I actually forgot to mention, too, that the Russo family, the two of them, they are being very generous, and they're donating $30,000 to the STEP Endowment. So we are very thankful for Carly and Julie for making uh, that donation possible. But now we can go ahead and get started. So um, the first question is, is how do you challenge others to get involved and donate during Pirate Nation Gives? Um, it's, you want me to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's super important to um, donate today and, and every day and going, but especially today. And I would encourage people to learn more about the STEP program. And uh, once they learn about it, they'll understand how important it is. And one of the, that's one of the reasons why we made this uh, significant donation. And we hope that other people will also donate today, like you mentioned, and help the, uh, help the program continue to stay alive. Yeah. Definitely agree with all that. I feel like it's so important. Donations, how the SEP program is able to offer so many amazing resources to students and help guide them through this transition from high school to college and then the transition from college to graduation. I feel like all the resources were very helpful for me. Yes, thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which is what are the most impactful resources um, access during your time at the STEP program? I think, Carly, this would be best for you to probably answer first. Yeah, so there were tons of resources, but I think the one that really stuck out for me was mentor and tutors. I had a mentor my freshman year, and she really helped me figure out, you know, college and not just academics, but also like living. You know, I had moved out. I was living in a new town. My family wasn't close by. You know, I had to feed myself. I had to make sure I was at cl in class. I was had to make sure my homework was done. And, you know, it's a little overwhelming as for any freshman. Right. And so, you know, having the mentor gave me an, a leg up almost on my classmates because, you know, I got to talk through, okay, I have a project due on Thursday, but my friend's birthday party is at the same time. So when am I going to do my homework? You know, I can't do it that Thursday. That's her birthday party. So my uh, mentors would help me be like, okay, so maybe you do half your project on Monday, half of it on Tuesday, and finish it up and finalize it by Wednesday, so you can go to this birthday party for your friends and, and not have to exactly yeah. and relax yeah, and not have to stress about okay at eleven fifty nine I have to turn in or like rush back and just feel like you know all this pressure. But okay, I have it done. I can hang out with my friends and that's okay. And you know, or if I have to run an errand or if I have to meet with a professor that for another class, like allowing me to schedule out was really helpful from my mentor, like learning how to manage my time. And then as well as that, like, you know, there are tutors available at the step program, but they're not always there. You know, they have to go to class, they have to go to do their thing. So, you know, figuring out, okay, I have a test for math on Friday, but my tutor isn't here on Thursday at all. Okay. So I know that that would stress me out. But again, I would work with my mentor and figure out when I was going to work with those tutors. And when I would work with the tutors, they were great. They would try, you know, okay, for math, this is how you do it. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense to me. Please say it again in a different way. And they would alter how they said it. 
because, you know, for me, math was always super tricky. So it was nice to have it said to me by the professor, by my tutor, and sometimes in a different way from my tutor and physically getting to work with them, you know, let's take it step by step. Like, let's watch videos. Let's do it together kind of thing. And, you know, grow and learn together because it's harder to ask those questions in a classroom with 20 other kids, but it's a lot easier and a lot less intimidating to ask my tutor who's sitting right next to me, who's seen that I'm trying to learn. I'm just struggling. So it's mentor and tutor really was helpful for me and, you know, building relationships and especially with the English tutor we had, I probably asked her a million questions every day. And, you know, sometimes it wasn't even related to English, but (laughs) it was both very beneficial. And didn't they also help you figure out how to reach out to help get help from other people and yeah, teachers? And definitely. Kind of it can be intimidating to figure out how to communicate with a professor, especially like when it's a professor that they almost haven't made the classroom such a relaxed environment. Cause like, you know, it's hard when it's a lecture hall and they have 150 students. So it's hard to build that connection, but you know, figuring out how to email these professors and ask, okay, can I meet you for office hours or, you know, how do I do this differently? So I'm understanding, or I remember going to professors and sitting there with them with the textbook, trying to figure out what this textbook is saying and what they're saying and making it all connect. And it's hard to figure out also the questions to ask. So tutors and mentors would help me figure out the questions I needed to ask my professors for the guidance. Yeah. I think you did some excellent points. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Julie. Um, Just the, the, the way that set packages all of these resources together is, is is so wonderful. Oftentimes, students not in SEP programs or programs like SEP have these resources available. They have to seek them out. SEP packages them for the students Absolutely. and helps them figure out how to use these resources. So that's that's really beneficial. Definitely agree. I love how you said that, that SEP packages this stuff so nicely. And I was going to say, Carly, you just found some wonderful support services that SEP offers our mentoring, our tutoring, you know, and I think, you know, a lot of our students, you know, they, they need that, that just little extra help yep. to make them be able to succeed. And I think a lot of people realize that just how imperative, how important it is for these services to be offered out there for students with learning disabilities, um, to help them to be successful in a post-secondary environment at ECU. Absolutely. Um, you just hit on some excellent points. Do you have anything else you want to add before I go to the next question? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. So also for, you know, our viewers, you know, so everyone knows is, you know, how, how did the strategies learned or accessed through the STEP program continue to impact your life after graduation, graduation? Honestly, how do they, how do they not impact my life is the real question. (laughs) Because um, my getting my graduate degree at um, UNCW, my program is all online. So that offers a lot of flexibility, but also can be pretty intimidating. You know, I don't have to physically be in a classroom. I don't physically have the professor with me every day or whatever. Mm-hmm. But because of STEP, it's helped me in undergrad as well. Um, like I said earlier, figuring out how to manage my time. I think that was the most impactful thing that I've learned because now... I am getting my degree, but I'm also working and I also have a social life. So figuring out how to balance homework and schoolwork and errands and friends, you know, it's it's hard. But, you know, I utilized a planner in college and now I'm getting my master's and I write down everything. I figure out, OK, I have a test on Friday. I'm going to study on Tuesday and Thursday for 30 minutes and then like, or something like that. And I still use that to this day. And I think like, honestly, that was super helpful just in all senses of like the world, like school, life, everything. So, and those are life skills that grown up, like regular grown ups that I work with don't have. They don't have the skills that she's just describing. They don't know how to have a project and then work backwards to figure out how to get to that project. It's hard. To finish that project. And Step, Step helped her figure that out. And she does, she uses it every day now. It's amazing. I think it is something that everyone should know how to do. I feel like people 
will be a lot less overwhelmed because it is overwhelming because I just started my fourth class. And on the first day you go through and you read the syllabus and you freak out a little bit because you have (laughs) six things to do by Friday. You're like, but I don't want to be doing homework every single night, three hours a day. Like you don't want to do that. So for me, you know, it definitely depends on the type of class and like when things are due. But for instance, the class I'm in now, most things are due Thursday and Sunday. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to have my weekend. I yes. want to do fun things. I want to go to the pool. I want to do fun activities. So I will not be doing homework on a Saturday and Sunday. Unless you have to. Unless I have to. <laughs> but I try, you know, not to do that. My priority is enjoying my time off to relax and recharge. So that might mean on Monday, instead of going to the pool or going to the farmer's market or whatever, I'm doing homework for three hours a day. And, you know, like three hours Monday, two hours Tuesday, and they're like, so on. And sometimes it's not fun. But, you know, I tell myself, okay, my homework's due on Thursday, one part of it. So like, let's get it all done by Thursday. And then you have Friday. And hopefully I don't have to do anything on Friday either. But, (laughs) you know, you have like, you know, your buffer almost. And also it allows you to figure out, okay, I even professor on Tuesday, because I looked at my homework on Monday. And hopefully, you know, by Wednesday or Thursday, she'll respond to me for an assignment that's due on Friday or Sunday or something like that. So. Julie, do you have anything to add? I I thought of something, but I didn't interrupt her. And now I forgot what I was going to say. So maybe it'll pop back into my brain as we continue to work. That's okay. (laughs) I, again, Carla, you hit on some really, really good points of of this. Go ahead. One thing she also learned in step is what what her best um, time to do school oh, yeah, is. What totally. time of day? Yes. Um, evening is not no. her time of day, so she would much prefer to do it earlier in the that morning and get it done. hundred so percent true. Something she learned about herself through the step program as well. I like today. I typically wake up between six and eight o'clock, mm-hmm. and on those days when I'm waking up at six. It's because I know I have homework I need to do and I have to get to work by two o'clock. And I know that seems like such a long amount of time between, but for me, it's like, okay, I want to have a mental break before I go from school to work. I need to get ready. I need to eat. Mm -hmm. So like I would rather wake up because I sometimes when I do have to work in the evening at five o'clock, if there's no way around it, for me, it's taking me twice as long mm-hmm. and I'm not retaining it as much as, especially when it comes to like reading passages and stuff like that, or videos, a video at six o'clock at night, that's talking to me about a theory. I am really going to struggle to give my all and all my attention and take notes that are thorough. So right. I definitely, for me, I wake up earlier and to do it. And you know what? That means I sometimes I'm asleep by nine 30 <laughs> And that's, that's fine. Okay. That's all right. Because, I mean, okay. what else am I going to do? <laughs> that's okay. So, it's fine. But, yeah. Hey, you get to implement those strategies. You find what works for you. And that's what's important. And I think that's what all goes back to the mission of STEP is through those academic support services of finding what helps a student you know, be able to succeed. Um, we all learn differently. Even if you don't have a learning disability, we all learn differently. And these strategies can continue to be impactful, not just during your time at ECU, I think, as Carly has shown, but beyond ECU, even in in life, in grad school, you know, in general. Yes. Really, really, really good, good points. I know for myself, same thing, I can't do homework at night. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I have to do it during the daytime. Otherwise, it goes in one ear and... Absolutely. out the other um and i get tired too mm-hmm. um so you, you're absolutely right you you find what works best best for you and and through step i think students are really able to accomplish that um let's move on to our last question mm-hmm. um so what does the step program mean to you and how do you see your gift impacting future students julie let's start with you for this one well First part of the question, what it means to me is it it means everything to me. Um, You know, there's nothing that's more important than your kids. And so to find a program that is exactly suited for my daughter was an amazing gift. And I feel so fortunate that we were able to merge 
her with the program and the program with her. And th it's the gift that keeps on giving. You, you can see she's sitting here in front of you. You can see yes. everybody out there that, um, that that program is going to be with her for the rest of her life. And it's going to help her continue to be successful. And I want other people to experience the same thing. And so it, 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 that's why I donated. And that's why I hope people out there will donate as well, because all children, all students deserve an opportunity. And STEP allows kids the opportunity who might not have a traditional path to college. So I'm forever, ever grateful for the STEP program and all the people that are involved and all the teachers and educators that are supporting the STEP program. I want to say one last thing before we close that um, I want people to understand that students that are in the STEP program are getting these supports through the program. But the academic program that they go through at ECU is identical to every other ECU student's program. Very so, true. So, you know, she graduated yeah. with a 3.6, maybe, so yeah. about right? 3.6. 3. 6. And yeah. it took her, I mean, she had to work hard to, to, get, to get those grades. Um, but I'm just so proud of her for the work that she's done and, you know, that she's in grad school right now. And I'm thankful to the STEP program for giving her all the support and Totally. Please donate. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Please, Please donate. donate. Everybody out there. <laughs> um, so the step mean program means a lot of things to me. You know, in high school, you know, I'm doing the work. I'm getting the grades. But, you know, those big tests like SATs and ACTs are not really reflected of my hard work and the time I put in and all that. And so, you know getting ready to apply for college, it was a little intimidating. Okay, you need this GPA, you need this, this and this. I'm like, well, I don't have those scores. I don't have that GPA. Because like, that's just not how my brain would work for tests. I just wouldn't, I couldn't do that. I tried, but it wouldn't work. So finding the STEP program was very exciting for me, because I always wanted to go to college. I always wanted to go to university that had a football team. I always wanted <laughs> to do the fun clubs. And I always wanted to do all that stuff. So when you're looking at it as someone who might not be able to, and that's all you really kind of wanted to do, it's pretty upsetting. Mm -hmm. And um, so finding step allowed me to, you know, get my four year university experience, a little different with COVID, but you know, we made the best of it. <laughs> we did, we did. And I still got to do all the fun things that I always looked forward to in college. And so it really means a lot to me because it was a way to get the experience that I felt like I wanted, but also like deserved. I worked hard in high school. Um, I probably worked harder in college than in high school, but um, you know, <laughs> that happens. That happens. Yeah. It does. It does. But, I, I did it and it really meant a lot to me that I also didn't feel alone right. meeting people in my cohort, the group that I got accepted into the program with. There was, I believe there was nine of us who got into the program the year I did. So I knew at least eight other people were pretty much in the same boat as me and it made you feel less intimidating. It made it feel less scary. And, you know, and you're um, advocating for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you're, it also makes you, make friends like you know going to school not knowing anybody is scary so you know step created things like boot camp week so we got to school a week before everyone else did and moved in that was great. we were rooming with people that we didn't know were in the same dorm or whatever and we did activities with them so we learned about them so you know it created yeah school resources but it also created a lot of friendships and a lot of you know meaningful times with people that i'm gonna remember forever, right. you know, and getting to meet different advisors who will sit there and they'll work with you and they understand that you're doing some scary things and it's okay to be scared, but we can figure this out and we can figure out how to be, maybe you still are scared, but you're going to get through it. Right. So I think it's really important for people to donate because there are going to be more students just like me who, you know, want this dream of a university and don't have the best AC, SAT scores and ACT scores but it doesn't mean they're not a hard worker. Right. And having resources like STEP with the tutors and the mentors mm -hmm. and, you know, the technology, like you can use an iPad or a computer to record the professor and it will type out what the professor is saying. So, you know, if you're missing someone when you're typing your notes or writing your notes, the computer will catch it for you. 
or like having the technology to be able to, you know, have things read aloud to me or get the resources where I got a planner my freshman year and that was made for everyone in my cohort. And it was really, really a lot. You know, it was a little <laughs> a overwhelming, but you know what? It helped me figure out what I do and don't want. And, you know, right. that obviously comes from people who took the time to make those planners and build those planners for people who, you know, might want to write more on a Monday than just I have a quiz at two o'clock. I need to write how I'm going to do it right. or, you know, or maybe I need to remind myself that I need food because, you know, like I'm cooking for myself in my little dorm room with a microwave. <laughs> I got to and I'm not going to eat dining hall food every day. So what am I going to do? But it just meant a lot to me, the program. And I hope people donate and I encourage you to donate and it will make a difference. Yes, please, please do. I know when you mentioned that part about the planner, I'm sure our Dr. Dietz, she may be listening or watching right now. Oh, she probably just went ecstatic hearing <laughs> you use your planner. She's always about using your planner. Totally. Um, but you both hit on just such such excellent points this entire time. And Julie, I loved how you even wrapped up to about students get to still experience a full university, you know, experience again. Mm-hmm. Um just because they're they're in the step program, they're still open to selecting any major they want to choose. Okay. Still able um, to get involved in other clubs and that and that type of stuff across campus. But at the end of the day, they still get to come into the cove and receive that comprehensive academic support from That's mentoring, it. tutoring, co-advising, and more. And Carly, you hit perfectly on how using those services help you succeed and you were able to you know walk across that stage <laughs> and show people i did it that i may have a learning disability but i did it right, right. absolutely and you know that that is what the step program is here for is to help students you know um that that is that's where we're get emotional i'm trying to um trying to get much there okay um but again to help everyone to keep these services going right this is what Pirate nation gives us here for to donate to make sure the next generation of students the incoming cohort that will be coming in this fall that they still have access to these services right. so they can too can be like carly and cross that stage and show i did it mom i did it dad that's right despite those challenges that's right um so again I encourage everyone, I know the Russo family also encourages everyone, you have until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time tonight to donate to this STEP program. You can scan that QR code that's right above my shoulder, or you can go to give.ecu.edu backslash PNG. Again, give.ecu.edu backslash PNG. You'll see a bunch of posts for the rest of the day. So there'll also be links there you can just easily click to in case you forget that. But Julie and Carly, before um, we wrap things up, I just want to give you one more opportunity if you have anything else to say before we close. (laughs) I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for Sam and, and, you know, everybody else in the STEP program. I'm thankful that um, you're bringing us to this platform and so we can share our story. So I'm very thankful for you both. Yeah, I was going to say a similar thing. I'm very thankful to everyone who's involved. You know, people who were involved my freshman year who might not be there anymore. People who are here when I was an undergrad, people, new people who are here with us now. I am very thankful for everything that you guys do behind the scenes. And, you know, I know it takes a lot. People who are going through those essays for um, people to get in. And I know it is competitive. And I know it is the interview process. But I know that people are going to make the correct decision. And I'm very grateful that I got to experience this program. Yes. Yes. And thank you both for joining us. And we also sincerely thank you for your generous donation of $30,000 to step in down. We can't thank you enough. Well, everyone that does it for this live stream. But again, I want to reiterate, the giving does not stop after this live stream. You have until 11.59 p.m. to donate to the STEP program for Pirate Nation Gives. I'm Sam Huffman, social media manager here at the ECU STEP program. Carly, Julie, again, thank you for joining you. us. Everyone have a great rest of your day and go Pirates.
Pirates. Go Pirates.